All right, today's video is going to be about CSS logical properties. So the link to the code via the live Scrimba site is down in the description. Hope you learned something, follow along. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the CSS logical properties. Now, the first thing to note here is that I've got a little bit of default HTML set up. So I wanna show you here, I'll bring up the preview window. And I wanna quickly note that if the preview window is not showing you exactly what I'm talking about, sometimes they get out of sync. Just go ahead and click the refresh button here and that should sync back up if you have a little issue there. So I'm gonna go ahead and click refresh here. And you can see that I've got two divs here. There's both, there's this container div that has a bunch of little paragraphs and another one that has a bunch of little paragraphs and they have borders on each side and these little things indicate the current color. So with CSS logical properties, we introduce a new way of managing writing modes. So the old method sort of here is on the bottom. So we have a keyword of top that represents the top, bottom represents the bottom, left over here and right over here. And this works for English or Latin based languages and things like that because we read in a left to right manner and in a top to bottom manner, which works. But if you are in another writing mode, let's say you're write, reading in an Indian language or a Chinese language, they oftentimes will start on the right and read left, or they'll start on the top and read down, top to bottom. So there's other ways of reading basically in the world, right, besides Latin. And these keywords, top, left, bottom, and right, sort of have inherent directional meaning built into them, which is not ideal. So the idea here is that instead of using top, we use the keyword block dash start. In other words, that's the start of the block and the block end is the bottom. Okay, and then we have inline start, which would be the left side and the inline end would be the right side. But again, left and right don't really make sense. It's where the text begins, the start and end of the text. And that could be left or right, depending on the writing mode. So what I wanna show you here quickly is in the base CSS, I've just got a whole bunch of CSS set up to do this little demo here over here on the right. And the only really interesting thing in here is that notice this top one here is set up under this add border and the bottom one is set up under the add border old, meaning the old method. And notice down here we have border left, border top, right, and bottom, right? This is kind of how we've traditionally done borders. But the new way or better way of doing things is using border dash inline start and block start and inline end and block end, okay? So that's the only difference between these two elements is this one is using CSS logical properties while this one is not. Now, right now the writing mode is set from left to right, top to bottom, so they are identical. But watch what happens when I come over here to this blank CSS sheet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little rule here for the container div, as the container div here is responsible just for both of these elements here. And let's go ahead and write a little CSS in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is set the direction. So the default direction is LTR, which is left to right. So nothing changes here. But watch what happens when I switch this instead to RTL, which stands for right to left, and everything should have switched. So you should now see that the writing mode is starting on the right and moving to the left on each of these lines, both in the old and the new. But the big difference here is notice how the inline start color also shifted over. So the border colors on the top one actually reverse themselves as they should, while the bottom one stayed the same. So if you had shadows and things like that, right, if you had like a shadow down on the bottom right, well, on a right to left writing mode, that shadow should be over here on the bottom left. And that actually applies itself properly when you're using the CSS logical properties. So let's look at one other sample here because this actually also works works with the new uh, writing mode. There's a writing mode CSS property. And we can set this thing to a couple different values here. So the default here is the horizontal TB. And what horizontal TB means is that it's a horizontal reading mode top to bottom. And that's the default, so nothing really changes. But watch what happens here when I switch this thing over to vertical. So I can call this vertical LR and what happens here is that now I'm in a vertical writing mode, right? So I'm reading from top, uh, vertical, left to right. That's what LR means. So left to right, vertical. And notice the blue border actually shifted up to the top instead of being, you know, on the wrong side. 
And the other one you can do instead of left to right, you can do RL, which is right to left. So that just switches as well. So you can see in this bottom sample, no matter how I tweak these writing modes, even if I switch back to LTR mode here on the top, left to right mode, the borders are never changing. It's always green on the top, blue on the right, purple on the bottom, red on the left. But the borders are always switching around here if we use CSS logical properties as they are supposed to when we use these new fancy properties. So this is really, really cool. It enables all sorts of uh, better design when you're, especially when you're working with internationalization and localization and you have websites that are read across the entire globe. So really cool trick. Well, we should definitely be using these uh, in our web pages today. So I hope you learned a tip or trick in this lesson and we'll see you in the next one.